So moving on to drums. My drums are always in red. First thing on every drum track I always use is the Sound Radix Auto Align. This will phase and time align all the drums so that they have the best, most in phase possible sound, which really, really helps with letting you do way less EQ. I had this Pro Q2 here, it's bypassed. I'm probably not using that anywhere. So we will just make it an active. So these things come up in my template and it's it's pretty easy, you know, to get to get where you want to be. So for instance, I have here done some work, but I have a starting point, a preset. You can see where it says start, it's it's italicized because I adjusted it. So that gives me most of the things the way I want it. It'll have some low end roll off, some high end roll off. It'll place the, you know, uh, the EQ before the dynamics and it'll set the gate up a certain way so that it won't hurt anything. And then I could, I could change as I go on the fly. So mostly every channel would have the auto align and then the, um, the, the SSL. Now, kick S is sample. And this is the Chris Lord algae samples of a DW 24 inch bass drum. And then I have a kick ambient sample, which is the same, but it's all the room mics and overheads. Now, why split them up, you may ask? Why not just have them in these other open slots over here on your trigger plugin? Pretty simple, because with the submixing, the way the summing mixers work is the summing mixer, mixer actually takes a signal and has a switch that'll make it mono or stereo. So you saw in that, that picture there, one, two, three, four were set to mono. So in those cases, one is kick, two is snare, three is bass, four is lead vocals. So it gives you a true analog mono position in the mix, which really, really helps the stereo imaging. And you'll see on the rest of those, the uh, other light is on and they're all set to stereo. So if I took the kick and the kick samples, including the ambient sample, and sent them all to the kick aux master, it would force them to mono since the kick aux master is in mono. And I like to have the ambience in stereo. So I send the kick sample with the ambience on it to the drum ambient submaster, which is a, sends it to a stereo app. And the same thing with the snare. And you'll see we have the trigger here. Now on this one, I have two different snares. I have the Chris Lord Algae Ludwig Brass, and I have a Brady snare, a, pl a Brady snare, I think that's Blackbird, a Blackbird sample. And of course, if I used a Blackbird sample, I would definitely use their chamber. Oh, this is uh, another crystal algae, the dong sample. So it's pretty much the uh, the crystal algae I, I use a lot, and the uh, Blackbird, and then I have a bunch of Billy Decker one-shot samples that I use too. And then I've got some that I've gotten over the years from folks and made my own. So down here you'll see a sample ambient, and that would be the room mics as we discussed going out to the drum ambience sub, which would be stereo. Then I have my toms, and then we have room mics, and it's all pretty much standard fare, nothing more than an SSL. Um, and then we have stick tambourine, snaps, tambourine, and shaker. So let's try something for fun. Let's talk a minute about the phase alignment with the drums. So let's check out the phase aligning of just the drums. So here are the drums with the bypass and then I'll pop it in. Bypass. So it lends quite a bit more focus to the low end and a little clarity to the high end. And that helps me just get there faster. That's really what this whole thing is about. So there is all your drums and percussion. So let's move on to our basses. So we discussed the sidechain basses, high and low. 
Let's take a look at and talk a little bit about these three base inputs. So if you notice, I have auto align on the base. So the base DI is auto aligned to the kick. And then the two different base amps or amp simulators are auto aligned to the DI. So the first one we have is sans amp which sort of gives us SVT-ish kind of growl. And the second one I have on here is the B15, Ampeg B15 simulator. And that gives us more low end vibe. So let's check out one at a time. Here's the DI. Now the Sans Amp. And now the B15. So now let's check out all the bases in, and we're going to shut off the high and the low bass aux submasters. So here's both. Now I'm going to mute the high. Now the high in. And now the overall bass with the lows out. And there are our bases.